Diabetes occurs when there is too much glucose in the blood. If diabetes is not managed, high blood glucose levels and other risk factors can lead to blood vessel and nerve damage. This can lead to the development of diabetes-related complications, affecting nearly every organ in the body. This program will explain the development of blood vessel and nerve damage and what you can do to prevent the development and progression of diabetes complications. In our body we have large blood vessels and small blood vessels that transport blood around the body. Damage to the large blood vessels that lead to the heart, brain and lower limbs can cause diabetes complications including heart attack, stroke or affect blood flow to the extremities, in particular the legs. Damage to the small blood vessels can affect the eyes, kidneys, teeth, gums and nerves. Nerve damage can start to affect the digestive system, sexual organs and the feet. Let's have a look at how this blood vessel damage may occur. The main underlying risk factor for blood vessel damage is a condition called atherosclerosis, which means hardening or narrowing of the blood vessels. This occurs when the walls of the blood vessels thicken due to deposits of fat and plaque. This can also lead to blood clots forming and either rupturing or causing a blockage to vital tissues and organs in our bodies. The risk factors for atherosclerosis include high blood glucose levels, high blood pressure and high blood cholesterol levels. High blood glucose levels can change the inner lining of our blood vessels. These changes over time allow blood fats and other particles to enter the cells of the blood vessel. This process causes inflammation leading to the development of plaque deposits and atherosclerosis. High blood pressure or hypertension is another risk factor for blood vessel damage. High blood pressure means that the blood is pumping through our blood vessels with too much force. Over time this can make the blood vessels stiff which can result in them narrowing. This extra pressure can make the blood vessels more vulnerable to the build-up of plaque and atherosclerosis. The third main risk factor for blood vessel damage is high cholesterol. Cholesterol is a type of fat that is part of all the cells in our body. Approximately 75% of our cholesterol is produced by the liver, with the remaining 25% coming from the saturated fats in our diets. Cholesterol is needed for normal body functions. However, too much can increase the development of atherosclerosis. You may see different types of cholesterol on your blood test results. LDL cholesterol is also known as the bad cholesterol and can cause plaque buildup in the walls of the blood vessels. HDL cholesterol is also known as the good cholesterol because it can remove excess cholesterol from the walls of the blood vessels and take it back to the liver for disposal. Triglycerides are another type of fat in our bloodstream. Excess kilojoules from food, alcohol or sugar in your body are converted into triglycerides and stored in fat cells. Triglycerides can enter the blood vessels and speed up the formation of plaque deposits. We have talked about how high blood glucose levels, high blood pressure and high cholesterol levels can lead to blood vessel damage. There are several lifestyle factors that can also impact blood vessel damage. These include smoking, which accelerates the development of atherosclerosis and reduces the ability of red blood cells to carry oxygen to the cells. Food choices can negatively impact your blood pressure, cholesterol levels, weight and blood glucose levels. Consuming alcohol above the recommended two standard drinks per day can raise both blood pressure and cholesterol levels. Physical inactivity has been shown to accelerate the complications associated with diabetes. As we have previously mentioned, damage to the large blood vessels in our body can lead to cardiovascular disease which can be divided into three groups. Coronary heart disease, including heart attack and angina. Cerebrovascular disease and stroke. And peripheral arterial disease leading to poor circulation, particularly to the lower limbs. As we discussed in part one, diabetes can damage the smaller blood vessels and nerves in the body. This damage can affect various parts of your body, including the eyes, kidneys, teeth and feet. Damage to the eyes is called retinopathy. Damage to the kidneys is called nephropathy. And damage to the nerves is called neuropathy. Let's have a look at each of these complications. Later we will also discuss the important health checks to detect the start of any problems and ensure that your health is on track. 
Your eyes have tiny blood vessels that supply blood to the retina, which is the seeing part of the eye. High blood glucose levels can cause damage to the small blood vessels and will lead to vision loss if not detected in time. The damage to the blood vessels causes three basic problems. Leakage of blood, proteins and fat from the capillaries. Poor blood circulation to the retina and growth of abnormal blood vessels, which are prone to rupturing and scarring. People with diabetes are also at increased risk of developing both glaucoma and cataracts. Both of these may occur at a much younger age and are likely to progress faster than the general population. Your two kidneys act like a filtering system, keeping the important nutrients in and getting rid of the toxins from your blood. Damage to the small blood vessels within the kidneys can affect this important filtering system. High blood glucose levels can damage the nerve fiber leading to nerve damage that can occur anywhere in the body, including the nerves in your hands, lower limbs, feet, and the nerves which regulate internal organs including the stomach, bladder, ears and sexual organs. Nerve damage to the nerves in your hands, lower limbs and feet can result in numbness and loss of sensation pins and needles, and feelings of pain burning and freezing. Gum disease can occur as a result of inflammation caused by elevated blood glucose levels. This also creates an ideal environment for bacteria to build up, increasing your risk of gum infections. Gingivitis is the most common form of gum disease, which is caused by the buildup of bacteria in plaque. If gingivitis is left untreated, it may progress to a more serious gum disease called periodontitis. Periodontitis involves inflammation and infection, leading to weakening of the tooth socket. Although we have highlighted the various complications that can arise from having diabetes, the good news is that early problems can be detected and complications can be prevented or minimised by following some healthy hints. The following checks will help you to reduce your risk of developing diabetes-related complications and to detect the start of any problems. Blood glucose levels will vary at different times of the day, depending on many factors. Daily blood glucose monitoring will help you to know what your blood glucose levels are at different times during the day, and how factors such as food, stress and exercise affect your blood glucose levels. This can help you and your doctor to make decisions about your diabetes management to ensure that they stay as close to your target range as possible. Talk to your doctor and diabetes educator about when to monitor and your individual target range for blood glucose levels. The HbA1c is a blood test that shows your average blood glucose level over a three-month period. HbA1c used to be measured in percent, but is now measured in millimoles. Factors such as your age and medical history will determine your target HbA1c. However, most people with diabetes should aim for 7% or less, or 53 millimoles per litre or less. Red blood cell disorders may either falsely elevate or lower your HbA1c result. If your healthcare professional does not already know, please advise them if you have a disorder that affects your red blood cells. Visit your doctor every three months for a HbA1c check. It is recommended that you have your blood pressure checked every three to four months. It is a good idea to have this done when you visit your doctor for your HbA1c check. The general blood pressure target for people with diabetes is a systolic blood pressure of 130 mm of mercury over a diastolic blood pressure of 80 mm of mercury. Talk to your doctor about your individual target, as this may change depending on your age and health. A lipid profile is a group of blood tests that measure your total cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, non-HDL cholesterol, LDL cholesterol and triglyceride levels. Lipid profiles should be done once a year or more frequently if advised by your doctor. An optometrist or eye specialist called an ophthalmologist can check the blood vessels at the back of the eye to detect any small blood vessel damage. This exam will involve either retinal photography or a dilated eye exam. It is recommended that you have this eye exam every one to two years or as advised. It is recommended that you have your kidney function checked once a year. This involves a blood and urine check. The blood test checks the rate that the kidneys are filtering blood. This is called the average glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. The urine check measures the amount of protein present in the urine. The presence of protein in the urine may be an early sign that there is damage to the kidneys. 
It is recommended that you visit a podiatrist every 6 to 12 months or more frequently if required. The podiatrist will complete a foot exam to help detect any nerve damage and circulation problems. In addition to visiting the podiatrist, aim to check your feet each day for any abnormalities such as swelling, redness, cuts, bruises, corns or calluses. If you have nerve damage, you may not feel any of these problems, which may worsen them. In addition, poor circulation may mean that any cuts or lesions take longer to heal, increasing the risk of infection. Report any abnormalities to your health professional as soon as they are noticed, and talk to your podiatrist about more ways you can look after your feet on a daily basis. To prevent gum disease, including both gingivitis and periodontitis, it is recommended to visit your dentist for a checkup every six months. The dentist can help to prevent minor problems becoming major problems. You can also help to protect your teeth and gums by brushing your teeth twice a day and flossing once a day. Ask your dentist to show you how. This section of the programme has highlighted some members of the diabetes care team and common checks recommended to help prevent and screen for diabetes complications. These team members include your GP or diabetes specialist, the optometrist or ophthalmologist, the podiatrist and the dentist. There are other members of the diabetes team including a diabetes educator to help you with the overall management of your diabetes, a dietitian to help with the dietary management of diabetes, an exercise physiologist to help develop an exercise program that is right for you and a psychologist or a mental health worker to help support your emotional well-being.